you have to be a, an unselfish player to choose this. Yeah, I have, that's why I really think I have a hard time seeing this ever coming to fruition. I think this definitely needed to get, let you do anything else. Like, you needed to, like, once per long or short rest, you could reroll a two or something. Like, give it a little bit more for you. Like, anything else. Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns of Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West. And today we're talking about the feat, Bountiful Luck. Oh, oh. I don't know how else. <laughs> that, that was perfect. Thanks. Uh, this is for halflings only. This is from Xanathar's Guide to Everything. It's a feat. Uh, your people have extraordinary luck, which ha you have learned to mystically lend to your companions whenever you see them falter. You're not sure how you do it. You just wish it and it happens. Surely a sign of fortune's favor. It has these, this is what it mechanically does. When you, when an ally you can see within 30 feet of you rolls a one on the d20 for an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can use your reaction to let them, let the ally reroll the die. They must use the new die. When you use this ability, you can't use your lucky racial traits before the end of your next turn. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit unclear on that last part. Can you use so, this again? How... The context of this is halflings all get a feature called Lucky. Right. And Lucky says whenever you roll a 1 on a d20 wow. for an attack roll, build, check, or saving throw, you can re-roll the die and must use the new result. But you can use this over and over again for your friends? Sure can. Oh, all right. Well, that's something. If you, it's, just, it's a once per round for your allies, and it becomes then once per round for you. So if you, like, let's say you're a halfling rogue, and you see your fighter rolls a 1 on their saving throw, and you go, don't worry, I got you, bountiful luck, and they get to, you know, get the new roll... Then it comes to the monster's turn, they attack you, you make it the saving throw, you roll a one, uh, well, now you're out of luck. Whereas before, you even no matter how many ones you roll, you would keep getting your lucky to prevent that from yeah. happening. Now, that's not happening 99% of the time. Usually yeah. characters aren't rolling a lot of ones in the same round. Uh, it's <laughs> it's an unlikely occurrence. But, um, you know, that's just, they added this little stopgap for some reason. I really think they could have saved the confusion and the text by just not including this line of text, because I truthfully don't think it reduces the power of this feature in a meaningful enough fashion that it justifies existing. All right. Speaking of the power of this feature, uh, how does this compare to Lucky? The Lucky Feet's cracked in half. This is not. Yes. Um, the Lucky Feet lets, turns disadvantage into super advantage. Like it fundamentally right, abuses right. the core systems of the game. This doesn't. This says... This does well, this functions the way you'd expect it to, and I do find it's pretty solid. I don't know if it's solid enough that every character's gonna want it, but where Lucky lets you say, okay, I have disadvantage on this attack roll, I'm gonna roll an additional die and choose one of these, or I have advantage on the attack roll, I'm gonna roll an additional die and choose one of these. This always augments the roll that is a one and then checks afterwards. So for example, if you make an attack roll with disadvantage, you roll a one and a six. You re-roll the one because you rolled a one on an attack roll. You must mm -hmm. use the new roll for that one. You roll a seven. You now are picking between seven and six for the disadvantage. You don't get to pick or anything special like that. Yeah. You get the six there. Advantage is the same fashion. So this can, it doesn't really help you at all with an advantage because you probably weren't taking the one anyway, but it does maybe give you some upside where, oh, I had an 11 and a one. Now I got a 14 and a one and that, or a 14 and an 11 and the 14 is higher. Now you get to hit or whatever. Yeah. I love halflings. I play a lot of halflings. I love lucky, like the feet. Sure. Not the feet. The uh, oh, right, halfling, the, yes, I, I use it all the time. It always feels great. Where I'm like, I'm a halfling. I rolled this with advantage. Or I rolled this with disadvantage. I'm not getting a one on this. I'm gonna keep getting a lot more rolls, especially in a system that's baked in to roll multiple d20s. Having a way to mitigate ones is ridiculously powerful. I have found. Um, I don't know if it's so powerful that it justifies a lot of characters taking it because it doesn't do more damage. It doesn't give you more survivability. Survivability in a conventional term. It just means you are less likely to have the worst outcomes occur to you. Uh, and I like that as a player. I like that consistency that it adds to my sheet. Now, that's a personal preference that I don't necessarily think is grounded in all that much, again, mechanical power. To then take a feat that expands that, I even am like, ah, I don't think I'm going this far. Like, it seems fine, but I don't. I don't want to take a feed that only helps my buddies. Like, no offense, guys, but I kind of want a feed that also helps me, you know? Yeah, Um. all right. I want to, because this is going to inevitably be compared to Lucky. Yeah. Uh, I want to know, all right, this was published in Xanathar, as you said? Yes. All right, where was Lucky published? Player's or... Handbook, baby. The okay. game released with that trash. This is, I mean, strictly worse in every way, right? Uh... I mean, it's different. 
it, Lucky has a limited, like, if you were to make infinite rolls, this is way better. Because okay, now yeah. those ones are getting re-rolled. Now, Lucky just happens to be really good because people aren't making infinite rolls. Either yeah. you only need it three times per long rest, you and it's insanely powerful. Often you need it less than three times per long rest, and it's insanely powerful. Um, it, the context of these does somewhat matter. They do slightly different things. Lucky is just 100% going to be better at the vast majority of tables, and it will not be particularly close. Because all this does is let you help allies not roll ones. Lucky lets you turn rolls into incredibly high outcomes of success consistently enough that it warps the game. This yes. turns ones, like Lucky turns ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives into a, into advantage when you need them, right? Like this mm -hmm. only hits one of those bad results. Yeah, that's about what I what I figured. Um, I don't know. If I'm playing a halfling and I want to lean into the luck, I'm, I'm probably going with Lucky. Yeah, assuming it's not banned. Like, it is the most yeah. banned feature in the game. So, you know. <laughs> But like I I don't tend to ban many things on my tables. Lucky is, yep, we're not doing it. If it's, especially right. if like I tend to favor if I'm in the player's handbook or even like expanding outside of the player's handbook, I want as many new things to be accessible as possible because I haven't played with them before. I played with Lucky. I don't need to see that again. We're good. You don't need to see it either. It's ridiculously busted. All right. Well, we don't need to keep talking about it either because we talked about it That's last fine. week. That's but, fine. um, all right. More about Bountiful Luck. The thirty foot range is a genuine consideration. If this isn't like a permanent buff. It is, you do want to be a character that wants to be around their friends, like proximity wise, which makes it a little bit awkward on classes like Bard that like to be very far away from fights and supporting at range. So like, it's a little bit clunky there. I think the Halfling Rogue honestly can play with this pretty well because they do tend to like to skirmish around and dash about and they have not that hard of a time being within range of their allies while staying safe. And rogues don't have a great smattering of feats to pick from, right? Like, you don't have a ton of well-supported, super-critical feats to play on your rogues. So I think if I were playing, like, a really dedicated, down-the-line halfling rogue, this might be, like, the third feat I consider. Like, it's it's one of those feats that you get towards the end of the game when you maxed out your decks, so you took the two feats that you really wanted, and then you're like, I guess now it's time to get Bountiful Luck, sure. Um, yeah. Be, it'd be cool if you were, like, a party of halfling rogues and you all got this. And you don't, none of you need it because you already are, are lucky. Oh, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> right? This really does suffer from the fact that you have, <laughs> there's no benefit for you here. Like, this does not affect your rolls at all. In fact, it just makes them worse because the ones of time that you roll a one after you use this, you'll be like, crap. I turned off my own benefit for giving you my luck. Eh. All right. Bad idea. Don't do that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people aren't going to want to play with this for that reason. I, I, a lot of people are going to just not want to play this because, again, it doesn't do anything for you. Like, flat nothing for you is a really huge ask for a feat, even if that feat is doing a really meaningful benefit to your allies. Like, digging a fighter that you don't, they cannot miss the saving throw, or they cannot, you know, that you really need them to hit this attack roll. Having a tool that just at wills their ones into rerolls means a lot of terrible outcomes will be mitigated by having this in the party. Yeah. But then again, Great Weapon Master does about as plus 10 to damage. So you're like, ah, wow, this doesn't have nearly that high of an impact because this doesn't, this only prevents failures sometimes. Whereas there are feats that lead to way bigger successes that push your character way further into the range of like doing powerful stuff. Well, there's the other side of the coin, though. I mean, all right, you yourself have Lucky, mm -hmm. the, the feature. Um, yeah, how many attacks are you making versus how many attacks the rest of your party is making. I think all right, if we call Bountiful Luck part of your lucky feature, I think you're getting a lot more juice out of it here. Yeah, but I don't, if I'm making a lot of attack rolls, I'm not committing a feat to this. So maybe this is like a caster feat. Like you take this again on a bar. Well, I'm saying you're not issues. making a lot of attack rolls com yeah, comparative the... to the rest of the party. Sometimes. You... Yeah. I mean, like if you're, if you're a happening monk, there's a yeah. real chance you're making more attack rolls than the entire rest of the party combined. Like, four attacks around is a lot of attacks for maybe a party that's got a druid, a cleric, and a, even, like, a, a paladin's only making two. So you're making four, the rest of the party collectively is making two, and well, you're probably going to use luck more on your ones because you're rolling a lot more dice than you will for need for the paladin, right? And you are a halfling monk, so people are laughing at you all the time. You're going to get into a lot it, of fights. That's <laughs> true. 
It's true. Now, like, if you're uh, – that's why I think your class matters in this context. This is the only argument I'm making. Yeah. I do think that whenever you are in a party that is on average making more attack rolls than you, this does net benefit the party more than it benefits you. Like, you're going to – your lucky feature suddenly become – again, but your lucky feature isn't actually benefiting from this at all. We're just, like, no. pretending it does because they have a similar name. But in reality, that's not at all what's happening. In reality, you're taking this feat that does a flat thing. And that flat thing is giving access to this reroll to other players, agnostic of what happens to you. I don't know. Commoner, is this actually just cracked and half? Is this a reason to play Halfling? I think it could be. Like, I could see this be good enough of an outcome changer and on rolling enough dice, especially in the upper tiers when you got like Path Fighters making four attacks with advantage. Being able to say that one, uh, it's only one around though. Oh my God. It just keeps getting a little bit clunkier. One around is normally plenty. You have to be a, an unselfish player to choose this. Yeah, I have, that's why I really think I have a hard time seeing this ever coming to fruition. I think this definitely needed to get, let you do anything else. Like, you needed to, like, once per long or short rest, you could reroll a two or something. Like, give it a little bit more for you. Like, anything else. Uh, as it stands like this, probably a, a comfortable little three. Like, I think it is genuinely powerful. I don't ever see anyone taking it because it yeah. is a lot to ask someone to take a feature that doesn't improve your mechanical advantage at all. It only improves how you help others. And that is... Not something a lot of people are that interested in building. And I understand why. You want your character to be cool. You want your character to be awesome. You want your character to do the cool things. Not, I help other people do the cool things by them being slightly luckier. You know? Yeah, three sounds about right. And uh, bless you if you take this. Yeah. Genuine boon to the party. All right. Well, that was bountiful luck. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.